fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high oh, silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> years following the gold rush, many men in California rose to fabulous heights of wealth and power. One of these was Arnold Gerson, whose wealth reached out to develop the vast resources of the Far West. Unlike the thousands of gold seekers, adventurers, and parasites who sought to grab only what they could hold in their hands, Arnold Gerson was in the Far West to stay. Gerson saw the growing influx of the disreputable element and knew that they could and would destroy what he and others like him had wrested from this land of promise. He decided to strike at the heart, the infamous Barbary Coast. In an effort to stamp out the viciousness, Gerson sought for and found the Lone Ranger. This masked rider of mystery, though reluctant to leave the plains and mountains of the cattle country, answered the call and soon found himself fighting a new type of criminal in the Barbary Coast. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, big fellow. I'll Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had left their horses on a dark stretch of shore where waves chunked lazily against the rotting piles. They made their way through a tunnel that led to the cellar beneath the Thunderbolt Cafe. The Thunderbolt's been dark since we got the evidence to put Gimlet in jail, Tonto. I'm not convinced that all activity has stopped. There may be closed upstairs rooms at Cafe, but worse crimes are in the cellar. Wait right here a minute, Kimosabe. Uh, we maybe make light here. It pitch dark. No, I know where we are. This is the cellar room of the Thunderbolt. Right above us is a trap door in Gimlet's office. Oh, that right. This is just one room of the cellar. I'm sure there are others. This small room. Thunderbolt, big place. Must be plenty other rooms. I want to find the records Gimlet must have kept. The cafe above was thoroughly ransacked. Nothing found there. Yeah, we'll feel around the walls for a door. Must be one. I don't want to risk a light. We might have... What matter? Toto. I thought I heard voices when I passed this wall. Come over here. Hold your ear against these stones. Wait. You stand right here. Me see thread of light. Yes. The plaster between the stones is broken away. There's a room beyond this wall and there's a light in it. Get here close. I can hear men talking in there. Uh, me hear them. Can you make out what they're saying? No. Me not hear them that good. The crack isn't wide enough to see through. That was a shot. In the next room. No. No, no. Listen, someone's close to the wall. We can hear. I didn't do it, sir. You can't say it. I didn't do it. Me hear him now. Please, sir. Don't frame me for murder. I never harmed any of you men. Why do you want to do this? No, I can't. Frame for murder. Tonto, there's some means of getting into that room. We've got to do it. These cellars have secret doors, concealed holes. There we are. Kimosabe. Who are you anyway? What are you doing down here? Who are you? 
Did the boss send you here? The boss told me to keep watch. You came in from the tunnel, didn't you? Why not? I heard you. Stand still now and don't make a move. I'm going to signal for the boss. He can. Great work, Tuttle. Let me find him by sound. He got here through a door. We've got to make a light now. Here, take that match. Look, men come. There's the masked man! Hey, there's the boss! Out of here to the horses fast. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced through total darkness toward the faint light that came from the mouth of the tunnel near the sea. Back of him, he could hear the angry yells of men, punctuated by blind shot. The Lone Ranger! The Redskins are too! Get him! Don't let him get away! Good thing they didn't have a guard at the tunnel's mouth. That right. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. I'll give those mad dogs something to think about. You shoot him? I'm shooting at the ceiling of that tunnel. Let those rats dodge a hail of chipped stone. Here's some more! Ready. Mount up, Tonto. Be ready. And ride. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Sylvie. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto dashed along the beach to the outskirts of town, one thought remained in the masked man's mind. No, no, I didn't do it. You can't see it. I didn't kill him. The unidentified voice beyond the stone wall. The voice of a man in abject terror. Please, Jens. Someone was framed for murder. Who? Why? Had the Lone Ranger known what transpired after his escape from the dank, dungeon-like cellars, he might have been forewarned. A well-dressed man whose clean-shaven face was far different from the greasy, bearded ones around him sat apart while cursing men discussed the escape. One more score against him. I've got a dozen nicks where hunks of rock hit me. When he opened up with those guns, it was like a dozen men. Wait till I get my hands on him. He won't die easy. I'll see to that. Shut up, all of you. He ain't nothing but a pack of yellow wharf rats. Hold on, Dagger. Don't tell me to hold on, Sim. You had him in the redskin. You had him in the next cellar. What'd you wait for? Why didn't you shoot him and be done with it? I didn't know who they were. It was dark in there. Dark, yeah. You know his voice, don't you? Who else is there that speaks like he does? Well, Calkins there speaks good. There's a lot of Knob Hill men that came straight from the east and brought an education along with them. They'll sit over there and lick your wounds like a pack of curs you are. I gotta finish with Calkins. Please, Mr. Dagger. The name's Dagger. There ain't no mister to it. Uh, yes, sir. Stand up. Take a look at that man stretched out on the floor. Poor Gusty. Weren't bad enough that an old wound fixed his voice so he could hardly talk. You had to kill him. But, but I didn't do it. I... What? Dagger, I, I don't know why you're framing me for a murder. I never harmed any of you well, men. Neither did Gusty. But there he is. Dead as a discarded snakeskin. You shot him, Dagger. You know you did. Right here in this room are a dozen men that saw you shoot him, Cockins. Listen to this. Scar. Yep. Why'd Cockins kill Gusty? He owed Gusty money. Lost it gambling. I was in the cafe when he lost it. Why, that's a lie. That's a... Don't call me a liar. You, Sam, what'd you see? That was simple enough, Dagger. Calkins told Gusty he couldn't pay. And Gusty said he'd collect one way or another. Then Calkins shot him. Yeah, the rest of the boys have their stories all said, Calkins. They'll sign statements before they leave here. Now then, we'll talk terms. It's too bad Zimmy here let the Lone Ranger get away. If he'd have killed him, he would have needed you. Well... What do you want? Well, you're employed in Arnold Gerson's home, ain't that true? Yes. You drifted down to the coast here to see what it was like. That's where you made your mistake. We got a line on where you worked. After all, Calkins, you're lucky. You can come out of this with a whole skin. Lots of men that come here where there ain't no business to be end up on an outbound ship. Shut up, Zim. I'm talking. Uh, go ahead. Calkins, we got orders from the boss to get the Lone Ranger. You know that Gerson is back in the Lone Ranger and his fight against the Barbary Coast. I don't know anything about I'm it. I'm telling you. Y yes, sir. Gerson is having a big party tomorrow night, ain't he? Yes. A fancy dress affair. It'll be mighty gay, I expect. All the swells will be there. Yes. How about the Lone Ranger? I... I don't know. He'll be there, won't he? I don't know. If he is, find it out. Find out how he's dressed. That's all we want to know. But, but how can I find it out? Well, that's your problem, Calkins. If you don't get the Lone Ranger tomorrow night, the law gets you the following day. But how will I let you know when I find the Lone Ranger? Well, me or one of my men will be in the rear of the house near the window of Gerson's library. You just open that window. 
Somebody will be there. I, I'll do my best. Well, you'd better. Your life depends on it. Scar, blindfold him and take him out. But wait a minute. That's all I want of you, Calkins. Come on. Turn around here. Now you boys go over that table and write out the statements I told you to write. Then we'll have the evidence we need against Calkins and it'll stand in any court of law. All right, Calkins. The blindfold will do. Now get going. Walk straight ahead. And don't try to remember where this place is or how to get here. Well, we got him the way we want him. <laughs> you can get up now, Gusty. Yeah, yeah. They do. Well, good enough to get by, but it's a good thing he was too scared to notice you close. You moved a few times while you was on the floor. Uh, Calkins didn't see it. Yeah, that's all right. But remember this, Gusty. If you let yourself be seen, Calkins will know you ain't dead. Then I'll lose my hold on him, so make sure that he don't see you. I'll make sure. Maybe after tomorrow night it won't matter. Dagger. Well, now what's the matter? Are you really going through with it? Through with what? Killing the Lone Ranger. Am I going through with it? Are you asking that just to be smart, or are you really asking it? Seems like a mighty big undertaking. Why is it? You had him right there in the dark. All you had to do was shoot, and you would have had the Lone Ranger. I know, but that... critter's made too much trouble already. He's got Gimlet in jail awaiting trial. He sent Shark Larson scooting the sea with a whole shipload of Raven's best pals for a crew. He stirred things up to such a degree that the whole Barbary Coast will be spoiled for men in our business unless he's done away with. <laughs> You bet we're going to kill the Lone Ranger. We got orders from the boss. The following evening was one of gaiety on Knob Hill. The mansion of Arnold Gerson was brilliant with thousands of lights. The guests all wore masks, but the hearty laugh of Arnold Gerson betrayed him instantly in spite of his costume. <laughs> well, that's the best joke I've heard in the blue moon. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Uh, Calkins, uh, pass the tray of that punch. Mr. Gerson, may I speak to you alone for just a moment? Oh, very well. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Yes. Oh, of course. You step out here, Calkins. I think we'll be able to talk the whole... Well, what is it? Perhaps my suspicions are unfounded. But you have had an experience with those villains from the Barbary Coast. Well, what about them? This being a masked ball, it would be possible for some undesirable characters to slip in and mingle unnoticed, wouldn't it? What are you getting at? One fellow in particular, sir. He's dressed as an Indian. Well? There he is, sir, at the far end of the hall. He hasn't left that spot all evening. And his face isn't masked. His disguise is so perfect, he needs no mask. <laughs> Why, Calkins, that man's not disguised. Not disguised. I know. <laughs> that's a good one. Now, he really is an Indian. Oh. Yeah, that's Tano. He came here with the Lone Ranger. Indeed. I didn't suspect the Lone Ranger was here. Well, he is. Masked, of course. Yes, Calkins. My mother felt as you do. She knew there'd be a lot of people here, and she knows that I have made a few enemies. She felt it would be possible for some of those to enter the house. I see. She asked the Lone Ranger to be here. I didn't notice him among the guests. Well, he is here. Mother took him upstairs and, in spite of all his objections, got him into a costume. It's fortunate she had a costume for him. Well, it was her father's. The uniform he wore in the Revolutionary War. Oh. Then it's the Lone Ranger who wears the Colonial Army uniform. Yes, that's right. But I'm quite sure we have no enemies in the house. If that was worrying you, you may put your mind at rest. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My mind is at rest now. I can go to the library and tell those men how the Lone Ranger is dressed. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Calkins, a servant in Arnold Gerson's home, has learned how the Lone Ranger is costumed at a fancy dress ball. Waiting his chance, he slipped into the unoccupied library and opened a window. Psst. Is anyone here? Is that you, Calkins? Yes. It took you long enough. We've been waiting here in the garden for an hour. I know. But I had to wait my chance to find out what you wanted to know. Did you find out? Yes. The Lone Ranger is here. How is he dressed? He's the one that's dressed as a revolutionary soldier. His Indian friend isn't disguised at all. All right. Then get the Lone Ranger to this room. But that wasn't part of the agreement. I was only to find out... Do you out want who... to stick to the letter of the agreement, or do you want to be a free man? If I tell Dagger that you ain't willing to help, he let the law know who killed Gusty. But, but I didn't get him. Might as well have done so. You'll hang for it. Now go and get him to come to this room. Leave the window open so as we can get a good clear shot at him. How many of you are there? Me and Scar. Get going now and don't waste time. Calkins waited in the hall and watched for the Lone Ranger to detach himself from the other guests. When the tall man, dressed as a continental soldier, came out of the ballroom, the servant approached. Pardon me, sir. Yes? I... I happen to know who you are. Is that so? May I say that all of us in this household owe a great debt to you. Are you sure you're speaking to the right one? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. You saved Miss Sally's life. Nobody's in debt to me, Calkins. All the same, sir, we Let us that... hope that the conditions that put Miss Sally in danger will be corrected. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, there's someone who is most anxious to speak to you. I hope no one will know I was here. This is someone special in the library. Who? Oh. I, I cannot give the name. But if you'll just step in there for a moment... Very well. Right this way. Oh, just a minute. It won't take but a moment. Hawkins, uh, you were off duty last night, weren't you? Uh, yes. Where were you? I, I, I went to the theater. I see. There's something familiar about your voice. Oh, there's the library. If you'll step in. The window's open. I thought Mr. Gerson was quite particular about keeping the windows closed and locked. I, I, I just opened it to air out the room. Uh, go right in, sir. Hawkins... What's the matter? I, uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all, sir. Now, just a minute. If you'll step in... Now, we'll stay out here in the hall. Close that door. Oh, please, sir. I, that is, if you don't care to see someone... Now stop it. Why do you want me to go into that room? I, it doesn't matter. I I think I've got to go and, and see about refreshments. Stay here. Why am I to enter the library? Oh, please, sir. All right, I'll find out. Take off your coat. What are you doing? Removing my jacket and hat. Oh, sir, there's... there's... If Mr. Gearson sees Put on my hat and jacket and go into that library ahead of me. No. No, no. Why not? What are you afraid of? Uh, please, sir, I don't... Now, there was notice something. He's coming to join us. You're going to do one of two things. You're going into that room or tell why you're afraid to. What matter, Kimosabe? All right, Calkins. Never mind. Tonto, take Calkins to one of the unused rooms and hold him. I'm going outside. Timmy, I'm getting doggone tired of waiting. What else can we do? Oh, nothing, I suppose. But when we've done our job, I'm going to make that fool servant pay for wasting so much of our time. I could be at one of the Pharaoh games making money instead of standing here in the garden waiting for a shot at the Lone Ranger. Better wait here and do as we're told. Dagger won't like it if we get back without getting that mask, man. You think that servant told us the truth? Sure he did. Wouldn't have the nerve to lie. He knows Dagger's got a murder to hold over his head. Yeah, that's so. Maybe the gent he mentioned dressed like a revolutionary war soldier is dancing or something. Maybe. Wait. Huh? Did you hear something? No. Why? Thought I heard someone moving. Rustle of silk or something like that. That's your imagination working overtime. Hang it all. Why don't we see the critter? Uh, Zimmy. Huh? I've been wondering... You think there's any way that Calkins could have learned that Gusty wasn't dead at all? How could he? Well, Dagger got him because he hung around the coast playing cards. Maybe he's got friends there that told him Gusty was still alive, wasn't dead at all, Ooh, and now no, he... No, Gusty was still alive. No one but Dagger and our own man. Hey, Zim, look. Now what? Oh, hang it all. Gerson and some of his friends have moved into the library. Now we can't get a shot at the Lone Ranger until they move out again. Well, may as well make ourselves comfortable. We've got a doggone long wait ahead of us.
While Zim and Scar waited outside the library, the Lone Ranger hurried to a room in the house and changed to his customary clothes, replacing the fancy dress mask with his own familiar one. Then he went to Tonto and the servant Calkins. Please, sir, I... Calkins, I... I overheard something. You're living in fear of the gallows, and that's why you were going to lead me to my death. But I Stop was... trembling. It was my in life. In some way, you got into the clutches of Dagony's men. I gambled with them. I didn't mean anything wrong. I... I was framed. They took me to some underground place and, and they killed a man in cold blood. They have it fixed so I can be proved guilty of the murder. If you're not dead by morning, the police will come to take me. Now listen to me. Gusty is not dead. But, but I saw I him. tell you, he's alive and well. It was all framed to scare you. I, I can't believe that. You think Lone Ranger tell what not true? Uh, are you sure you've made no mistake? I've made no mistake. Now here's what you've got to do, and you're going to do it. Or I'll let Dagony's men go through with their plans for tomorrow. Simmy, maybe there'll be some action now. Gerson has just left the library. There's no one in there. No, Calkins had better do what he was told or he'll wish he had. There ain't much we can do if he refuses. Maybe that's what you think. But I know ways to make him sweat. There he is. He's in the room. Well, it's Calkins again. Why don't he send the Lone Ranger in there? He's the one we want to crack at. Hey, what is he... Zimmy, he's got a gun. Look. The dog gone. He shot himself. We've got to get out of here. That shot will bring a crowd. And the open window will make him look out here. Come on, Calkins can't help us now. Zim and Scar raced from Knob Hill and made their way as quickly as possible to the Barbary Coast. They went into one of the many cafes. There's Dagger. Good thing we found him quick. Well, did you get him? No, we didn't. That's a funny thing. We didn't have the chance, Dagger. We saw Calkins. We found out how the Lone Ranger was dressed, and we were waiting the chance to get a shot at him. Then Calkins turned yellow on us. He'll pay for that. But, Dagger, it's too late. Why is it too late? Calkins came into the room where the Lone Ranger is supposed to be. Took out a gun and shot himself. Well, of all the cars... We had to light out of there and plenty fast. We didn't see hide nor hair of the Lone Ranger. Come on. Where to, boss? You gotta tell the rest of the boys. Go to that Knob Hill place and get the Lone Ranger. But how can you? You know he's there, don't you? Sure, but how can He's you... gotta leave, ain't he? All right, we'll camp near that white horse of his and get him as he leaves. Uh, hang it all. Why didn't you men think of doing that in the first place? Uh, this mud. Where's the Colonel others? Mud. Where's the others of the gang? Well, right here across the street. Is Gusty with them? Sure he is. Come on in. This is a nice, quiet place. There, there's Gusty now. Boys. Hi, boss. What's new? Hey, did they get him? No. Cock and shot himself. We got to go get the Lone Ranger ourselves. I didn't want to run the risk if we could have avoided it, but now we got no choice. We've got the job of getting the Lone Ranger. So let's get going. Hey, now that Calkins is dead, there ain't no point in my keeping out of sight, is it, Dagger? No, you can come along with us, Gusty. Good. We'll all of us go. There he is, the masked man. He's come here. There's his white horse. Are you men looking for someone? Get him! Uh, oh! Good work, Tonto. Need get anyone else to reach for a gun. Behind you, men, is a fellow who can handle a bullwhip. How'd you get here? You haven't had much to say. Who are you? What's it to you? You're the man I want. Hold on, I ain't done You're Gusty. Throw the rope around the others, Tonto. I'd use my own whip to take Gusty with us. Boys, boys, he's thrown the whip around me. He's dragged me to his horse. Get this rope off us. Get them, Tonto. Uh -huh. Me got him all roped in big news. Pull it tight. Come on, let's count. No, stop, stop. They're coming on my feet. Let him go. Let him go. Oh, please, let me go. Let me go. I ain't done nothing to you. Now, you come, Gusty. You're going for a ride with me. You got him? Yes, Tonto, get away. Get him up. Come on, Silver. Leaving the plotter sprawling in soft mud, the Lone Ranger carried Gusty in the saddle with him and headed back to Knob Hill. The party had broken up, but Gerson, acting on instructions, had a lawman and two assistants on hand when the Lone Ranger forced Gusty ahead of him into the room. There he is. <laughs> oh, you're the man that's supposed to be dead. Sit down there. Sorry to use your home for this, Gerson. You're welcome to use my home in any way you want. And I can't think of a better use for it than to help justice. Gusty, you're in a bad spot. You know that? I, I didn't do nothing. You were part of a scheme to kill me. No, no. Dagger and his men got statements together, sworn statements that prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Calkins murdered you. Isn't that true? Yes. In other words, there is proof that you're dead. Don't say that. If you're found dead tomorrow morning, Calkins will be charged with a murder, won't he? I, I suppose he will. Dagger and his men will see to that. They have ample proof. Good. What do you want of me? Information. 
I want you to sit at that table and write out everything you know about Dagger, the crooked games he's in, the people he's killed, and proof of crimes enough to put him and his men in jail and keep them there. Oh, no, I can't do that. Gusty, you can't refuse. But I can't. I'll show you why. Come in, Calkins. Uh, Calkins. Very lively for a corpse. But they said you shot yourself. Not yet. They were mistaken, Gusty. Now, let me tell you what Dagger and his men will do in the morning. They'll be mad because I'm still alive. And as you saw tonight, they know I'm still alive. They've got mud in their ears to prove it. Uh, uh, they learn that Calkins is still alive, they'll get square with him. They'll let it be known that Calkins killed you. And I won't take it without making you pay. If I'm to be charged with murder, I might as well be guilty of it. Uh, I'm not dead. I... That's just the point, Gusty. In the morning, Dagger will want to charge Calkins with a murder. And to do that, there'll have to be a corpse. And you'll be that corpse. Uh, Dagger has to kill you or he can't use his statements against Calkins. No, no, I, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Let me go. Let, let me have a chance. Give me a couple hours to get out of town. You have a chance. Put Dagger, Zim, Scar, and all the rest in jail. There are lawmen here. They have others waiting outside. They have horses and guns. And they're ready to make arrests. If, if you get them all in jail, you won't need me then. Will Not you? if you can furnish evidence enough to hold them in jail. I can. I can. Rats are going to use me as a corpse. they kill me to help their schemes. Well, I'll feed them to the dogs to save my neck. I'll show you how to get to the headquarters, how to get all the evidence you need. There's statements of murders, proof of smuggling, everything you need. Come on with me. Come on, Sheriff. Um, me go too? Yes, Tonto. You come too. And bring your whip. Mr. Gerson, sir, I... I don't know what to say. Relax, Calkins. You're not a bad man. You're one more victim of the Barbary Coast. Oh, thank you, sir. One more reason the Lone Ranger wants to smash the Barbary Coast. If you ask me, sir, I think he'll do it. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.